Here are seven stocks under $20 that you won't want to miss. Let's get started. Welcome back. Today we're exploring seven stocks under $20 that you don't want to miss. We're going to unravel the potential behind these affordable investments and what they can maybe mean for your portfolio. But first, Chris, I kind of want to talk about why stocks under $20 are catching our eye here. I mean, it's a common misconception that a low price stock is not worth the investment. Mm -hmm. But what do you have to say to that? I mean, let's take Palantir Technologies, for example, right. here. Well, there's a difference between the price of a stock and its value. And one of the realities of stocks that trade for $20 or less is there's many times there's hidden value there that hasn't been realized by the market and by analysts. Palantir you brought up is a really good example of that. Uh, just a year ago, it was trading actually for around $6 a share, maybe even lower at one point. And, you know, there were, there were investors that understood or believed they understood the value and they've benefited as the stock has rallied up over uh, I think it's probably over $22 a share as we're talking this morning, but you know, that's a, that's a good example of a stock that even at $22, it's a really good value. And, it, and, and um, retail investors especially have an opportunity to be buying a lot of shares at a better price than they may if the stock goes where some analysts believe it might be going in about a year. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, let's yeah. take a look at your list here, Chris. We have first sure. up Chewy, the online pet food mm -hmm. and supplies retailer. And it's been a bit of a rough year for them with stock prices kind of tumbling down. Yeah. Um, but analysts are giving Chewy a thumbs up still and predicting a significant upside. Uh, so do you think that Chewy is positioned for a turnaround, Chris? Secure your financial future with MarketBeat's exclusive report, Seven Stocks to Buy and Hold Forever. Dive into the insights of proven winners for income investors as our list reveals why these seven stocks boast very promising long-term outlooks. Don't miss out on the opportunity to grow your wealth with confidence. Download this free report today and start building a portfolio that stands the test of time. I do. And the reason for that is because, first of all, the stock has been just beaten down. I mean, I, I think I wrote in my in the article that the stock sounds something like 33% in just in the last year. And, mm -hmm. um, excuse me, or no, I'm sorry, that's 33% in just the first quarter of this year. So, um, a lot of it just has to go with the fact that people are expecting the consumer to pull back more. And that even includes the spending that they're doing on the pets, but there's a lot in Chewy's last earnings report that shows that that might not be the case. Um, you're seeing, margin expansion, the company is lowering its debt, they've got higher free cash flow. All of that it does not seem, in my opinion, to be being looked at by the analysts. I think there's upside to Chewy stock going forward. All right. Well, here's a stock we've been mentioning on this channel recently, Barrick Gold. Mm -hmm. I mean, even with economic uncertainties, gold remains a safe haven and Barrick is one of the largest gold miners that's at the forefront. Um, so with gold prices soaring and a promising future forecasted, should investors be in on this opportunity, Chris? I think every investor should have some sort of exposure to precious metals in one way or the other. If you don't want to hold the physical metal of gold, um, gold mining stocks are a good way to do that when the market for the metal is going up as it is with gold. I just saw this morning, I think gold was up like, um, eleven dollars this morning, and it's just it just keeps on going up and up and up. However, one of the things, one of the reasons why I like Barrick is because quality matters. Barrick is one of the largest gold miners, and this isn't just a um, a twenty twenty four story. Uh, if you've bought, if you've held on to Barrick Gold for the last five years, you're up nineteen percent. That doesn't maybe sound like much, especially when you compare it to some of the tech stocks. But when you consider that Barrick Gold's a dividend player and everything else. It's a it's a nice steady stock. It's been growing consistently, and with demand for gold increasing, uh, uh, you know, around the world, this is a good time to be getting in on a stock like Bear Gold. Okay, moving along to Vale, it's a leading miner with a dip in earnings forecast for 2024. Yeah, its fundamentals are suggesting a brighter future. Uh, Chris, does Vale's current price make it an attractive buy, or is it more of a risky bet? I think it's an attractive buy, and here's why. So Vale is another miner, 
But one of the areas of strength for Vale is that they mine iron ore. They're one of the leading miners of iron ore. And that is needed for steel production. So um, as the infrastructure money from the from the Congress's Infrastructure Act continues to filter through to the economy, infrastructure stocks are going to be going up higher. I see demand for steel increasing. Uh, vale itself said they had a 50% production growth in the fourth quarter of last year. I think that trend is going to continue. And I, you know, right now, I think this is a good time for investors to be looking at Vail stock. Okay. Now with the world leaning towards clean energy, Chris, uh, uranium energy stock has skyrocketed. Uh, but with such a rapid ascent, I think there's something to consider, um, maybe whether it's still a smart investment or are investors too late to the party? Chris, which side do you stand on with that? You know, I, I'm going to stand on the side that I, that I don't think it's too late to the party. Now, some people will notice that the stock is up like 137% in the last year. And that's almost totally due to the fact that the underlying commodity, in this case, uranium, is also up. However, institutional investors have been heavy buyers of stock in just the last two quarters, and that tends to have a little bit of a lag effect. So I'm expecting still that that uh, UEC still has some room to run here. Okay, well, there's a few more that are definitely important yeah. to cover. Uh, so one of those is Riot Platforms, with which gives investors an indirect exposure to Bitcoin. Right. Now, there was a recent price drop here, and the halving event is now on the horizon. Yep. What can you share about this one, Chris? Well, I think you just really nailed it. Um, this is the the pullback is largely expected to be due to the fact that this Bitcoin having event is coming up at some point in April. Um, there's been a huge pullback just in Bitcoin itself in the last week. Um, Riot Platforms is a way for investors to get exposure to the Bitcoin market without buying into any of the Bitcoin ETFs, without buying Bitcoin directly. I look at Riot Blockchain as more of a, you're investing in blockchain technology this is to me seems like a very safe way to do that. Um, right now, the stock still has like a seventeen dollar eighty three cent price target. So if that if they hit that, that's like a thirty nine percent gain over the next year. Riot block, you know, Riot platforms is one that I think investors might want to look at if if they're looking to get exposure into that sector of the market. Okay, of course, AI is the buzzword lately, yeah. and SoundHound is making waves with this generative AI technologies. Do you think that they could lead into the next AI revolution, Chris, or is the competition just uh, still too stiff? This is this is one that I think carries a little bit more risk. SoundHound has been one of the darlings as far as cheap AI stocks that you can find there. You know, I guess you could say they're kind of taking the idea of generative AI. It's going to kind of like be Siri on steroids. It's the idea they're bringing it into markets like um, call centers and into electric vehicles. What I would say is that they do have a presence in those markets already. And once you're in those markets, it's probably going to be very difficult to root them out. Uh, to me, I still think that... Um, you know, institutional ownership isn't that high in the stock, and I would kind of expect it to be higher if this was really going to gain legs. But at the same time, this is a company that's not profitable yet. That's probably something analysts are waiting on. I think this is a speculative company to be sure, but it's one that if investors are truly looking to say you're you're taking that risk on buying a cheap stock to see it rise in price, it one it's one that may be on their radar. Okay, lastly, here is Hims and Hers Health. It's showing impressive growth in the telehex, uh, telehealth sector. Yeah. Um, share the key details for this one, Chris. Well, the key detail here is that the company just is growing subscribers massively. I This one actually kind of took me by surprise because um, I knew that the company was kind of broadening out their platform in terms of the, the type of uh, telehealth services they were providing, but I was unaware of just the the size of the, you know, how many subscribers they're gaining, the strong revenue growth. And this just looks to me, telehealth seems to be catching on in areas that Hims and Her Health are dealing with. They're dealing with things that 
you know, don't necessarily require um, a patient to go visit a doctor. There are things that they want to, you know, there, there are things that they're looking for solutions for that Hims and Her Health can provide. Um, again, I think this is a little bit speculative, but for investors that have room in their portfolio for a speculative stock, Hims looks like it's uh, Hims looks like there's some room to run here. All right. Well, thank you so much for these insights, yeah. Chris. We hope you all enjoyed this closer look at the seven stocks under $20 with potential to uh, significantly impact your investment strategy. Remember, the market is full of surprises and sometimes the most unassuming stocks can offer the greatest returns. So don't forget that Market Beat is here to help you with your research. Catch us right back here on this channel for more news. We'll talk soon. Oh,